in the middle of trying to get basic text rendering support in my renderer. So far, I have quads and textures working, so now I need to start parsing font files. My plan will be to use an external library to first extract information from TTF files, and from there I should be able to extract enough information to build my own font data and then stop using the library. That way, the library usage is contained inside of a small, closed path. I'll need an atlas holding all the rasterized versions of each glyph, uh, an array of glyph metrics and UV coordinates, and then a map that takes code points to the glyph indices. With all of that, I should be able to dump the font parsing code and just rely on that data structure for the actual text rendering. I won't be doing anything very fancy here, so I'm not going to worry about kerning, uh, glyph compositions, or other character sets besides the Unicode character set. Just the basics for now. Since I'm using a library to handle this, I'm going to have to start by pulling in that new dependency and coming up with my organization plan for that. I'm going to start by trying out the STB TrueType library. So let's get into it. First, I'm setting up a new Scratch program, this time in a file called stbttfscratch.cpp. In this file, I can get a clean slate where I can spin up the usage code for STB, the STB TrueType APIs, and I can experiment with them and figure out how I want to get it all working. As usual, this is just temporary. Once I've got the basic features that I want working, I can transplant this work into the code base. So far, the only dependencies I've had in my code base are from the C standard library and the OS provided libraries. This is the first time I'm adding a dependency that I have to organize myself. For this, I'm adding a new folder called dependencies, and any library I rely on will go in this folder. I really like this style of dependency management for a couple of reasons. First, it means I can set up the code base on new machines without having to worry about setting up all the dependencies that aren't tracked along with the rest of the source by my version control. So I'll never accidentally do things like have different versions of a library on different machines or forget how to configure something that was working on another machine and now I'm not sure how to set it up again. Second, this puts me in control of when updates to my dependencies happen. Sometimes when you're relying on a library or an engine or whatever, you really want to get access to some new features in a new version. But other times, updating requires a lot of refactoring that isn't immediately worth the cost. By using this style, I have more control over my dependencies and how they affect the rest of my code base. That's all the structuring work I needed to do. So next I start going through the library and picking out the APIs that I need to render glyphs and get the metrics for them out of the TTF file.
Unfortunately, I hit a problem with STB true type. I can find all the glyphs, get their metrics, and render them, but the library is limited in its ability to map code points to glyphs. It does have a function that maps a given loaded font and a code point to a glyph index, but it requires me to keep the font file loaded and to go through the STB API every time. It doesn't have a way for me to comprehend the whole map. If I want to build my own map data structure and cut out the library after that, I would have to map every possible key through the mapping function. In the case of font rendering, there are 3 times 2 to the 19, or approximately 1.5 million code points, which are the keys I would have to put into the mapping function. Even really large font files, on the other hand, are only going to contain a few thousand code points. So not being able to comprehend the whole map is creating a lot of cost compared to what I should be able to achieve. One thing I could do here is try to get by with just committing to using a limited range of characters. For instance, I could take the ASCII range and ignore the rest. But I would rather just solve the problem in a relatively complete way as early as possible. And so I'm going to go digging and looking for a way to do that. For a little while, I'm trying to salvage the path that I'm on by trying to see what it might take to upgrade the STB true type library with this extra function that I need for comprehending the map. But right now, it looks like a bit too much for me to take on. So I'm going to declare this path a little bit of a dead end. The good news is that everything I did today is in a Scratch program. And now we really see the benefits to using a Scratch program to get started. One thing it means is I don't have any cleanup work to do because I didn't clutter up my code base with a bunch of nonsense that I have to unroll now. I can just be done right here. Another benefit is I get to keep this code basically indefinitely so that if I ever do want to pick up this idea of upgrading the STB true type library, I have a good starting point. I don't have to redo any of the work. So with all of that set aside, next time we'll be taking another crack at this whole font rot library thing. We'll try out free type, which was the other library I was looking at. See you then. Mm -hmm.